right, what is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 396. I just kicked Gus under the table. I did not mean to. I just about warned you that he is not laying in his usual spot. Gus normally lays just off camera down here, <laughs> but tonight he decided to lay at my toes, and I just, I'm sorry, buddy. Welcome to the show. <laughs> We're very excited about tonight's episode because we get to bring on a guest. Oh, man, it's been a long time, I think, since we've had him on yeah. the show. But Ryan Galfi is going to join us tonight. We're going to chat about Canyons 100K, which just occurred this last weekend. Uh, we're going to chat about Cascade Crest 100, which he is running uh, this summer, which is one exciting. of our favorite races. Uh, but one of the topics of conversation that we've been talking about a lot on this show, and I'm excited to talk to Ryan about it because he's he can offer a really unique perspective being an elite runner, a sponsored runner, front of the pack runner. And that's self comparing, like comparing your current athlete to the previous you athlete and, and how maybe we can learn from that, adapt to it and accept it. Uh, if not use it as a way to sort of fuel our, our training. So it's going to be a really fun conversation tonight. I'm very excited to welcome Ryan Gelfie on the show. Sit back, relax, everyone. The show begins now. Ginger Runner. Yay! What is up, everyone? Welcome to Ginger Runner Live, episode number 396. Thank you for taking some time out of your busy Tuesdays to spend a little bit of it with us. One day we'll nail the opening. One day. Maybe. Uh, I am your host, Ethan Newberry, and this is... Hi, everyone. Kim Tashima Newberry here. Good to see you. <laughs> Good to see you every day. Good to see you, person that, I don't, that we look at yeah, each every other day. all day, every day. 98% of the day, that 2%. Eyes we closed. look at our dog. Eyes closed. Uh, welcome to the show, everyone. We're very excited about tonight's episode because we get to welcome on, on a guest. It's been a long time since we've had him on the show. He's uh, been a long time ultra runner. Has been in the game for a long time. Adventurer, uh, ski mountaineer. Just the, the dude has a lot of accomplishments under his yeah. belt. I'm very excited to welcome Ryan Gelfie to the show tonight. We're going to chat about his most recent race, which just occurred this last weekend, the Canyons 100K, which was a uh, highly publicized event. Uh, now I believe I have to refer to it as the Canyons 100K by UTMB. UTMB. Uh, I don't want their lawyers coming after us. That would <laughs> not be great. Um, but it's exciting to, to, to talk about that race, uh, how it unfolded for Ryan, and uh, the conversation around Cascade Crest 100 miler, which he will be running this year. But really, as I mentioned in the pre-show there, some of the conversation we want to talk uh, about tonight is self-comparison, comparing our current athletic self to our previous athletic self uh, is it healthy? How can we learn from it? How can we adapt to it and sort of accept where we are at the time in this place? And uh, Ryan mentioned this on Instagram. This is something that he, he was sort of looking back on this weekend and, and acknowledging. And I think this is going to be a really fun conversation with someone that can give us a perspective from the front of the pack, what it's like as an, as an elite sponsored runner to sort of reflect on that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, before we introduce our wonderful guest, Ryan, of course, it's not just me. It's not just Ryan. It's hi me again. again. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> Let's just keep saying hi to each other. Yeah, but you're here. You have I'm like here, the yeah. hardest job during the live show. <laughs> uh, welcome, everyone. If you're new, come say hi in the chat. I'll be in there uh, throughout the hour. If you have questions for our wonderful guest, Ryan, please ask them there. We also like to acknowledge and thank our wonderful GR crew. It is because of them that we are able to do these live streams every single week. In, in addition to our daily live streams that we do uh, for our GR crew, uh, our weekly reviews or films, it is the GR crew, our Patreon subscribers that allow us to do this full time. So a huge shout out to them. Thank you so, so much. Two individuals in particular at that top tier, we like to recognize at the top of every Ginger Runner Live episode. Rick Bjarnison is an ultra runner out of British Columbia, British Columbia, Canada. I don't know where I was going with. It sounded very fancy. British Col Columbia, <laughs> Canada. Uh, he's a fantastic ultra runner as well as a web developer. His company, Cheeky Monkey Media, Dot CA redid the gingerrunner.com website. You can go check it out. It's a beautiful website. Very, very thankful for them. Uh, Brian Sands as well. Brian Sands, longtime supporter, amazing member of this community, has inspired hundreds, thousands of people to get out there and challenge themselves. Uh, he ran his first marathon at the age of 50, lost over 100 pounds in his journey. He's just an amazing human. We're, we're lucky to have him be a part of this crew. So thank you to those two individuals. We appreciate you very much, and we appreciate you, GR crew. Head on over to patreon.com slash the ginger runner if you would like to join the crew. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome our guest who's coming to us not from home. I believe he's currently traveling post Canyons 100K uh, by UTMB. Our guest Ryan Gelfie <laughs> is uh, coming to us from another location, but I believe his internet is solid and I can't wait to to talk with him. Mr. Ryan Gelfie. Yay! <laughs> hey, th thanks a lot for having me. No, I was psyched when, uh, when you reached out 
And I was like, yes, let's do this. I, you know, no matter where I am in the world, no, we'll I'm make it so work. I talked to Kim and Ethan about running <laughs> and all of these fun things. Uh, so first, how's the body holding up? Because post 100K, Ooh. I mean, that's a different beast, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, people who say these things are like, it, there's not very many people, but some people are like, oh, it's not that far. <laughs> That's, I mean, that is crazy. And it's not right. And I think, you know, for maybe just like a select few people, they truly can do it and like not be phased. No, I'm pretty beat up for sure. Like I can walk, <laughs> like I haven't, I'm not going to go running yet. You know, I kind of want to take my kid on a hike tomorrow. That's like my goal. Uh, yeah, no, Canyons is a very tough course. I think it gets undersold maybe a little bit people like oh buttery california trails it's not like it's all super technical it's not crazy yeah i mean it depends what you're comparing it to but yeah the course is tough and it's obviously super backloaded if you look at the profile there's just like you know i had to walk down the last doggone hill like i just cramping Uh like i didn't and i was like i just you know slam i'm like well these salt pills some people say they work some people say they don't but i think they work because like you know I was able to start running again, at least after I took a few more of those. Uh, yeah, no, the body is like fine. Honestly, I hurt my back before the race. So that's like just as bad too. So oh, all right, well, <laughs> uh, checking, checking we, posture we tonight. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but you know, not, no, nothing major. No, I'm psyched. I finished hundred K and uh, I think anytime you get one of these races and you get to the end, you know, it feels pretty good and, uh, you're not injured then, you know, success, I guess. No, I'm, I was, I was, uh, it was a really cool race. I'm I'm excited that you uh, are on the show for a myriad of reasons. Obviously, we're, we're going to get into some more specifics on kind of the topics that I was mentioning up top there. But I am you mentioned the course and deceptive. I feel like anyone that I've talked to that was either there this weekend or volunteered there this weekend kind of is in the same wavelength that you assume because it's it shares a lot of the similar course to Western States. Right. A lot of people sort are of. familiar with Western States, sort of. There's some some sections, of course. There's different. Yeah, it's like half. I bet it's less than half, actually. People uh, think of Western States as a net downhill race. Canyons is the opposite. By yeah. four four thousand feet up. Why? Which is kind of up. a lot, actually. Yeah. When you and like the last ten miles. Out. Do you remember the last 10 miles uh, vividly? It was, really, it was pretty bad for me. I was actually doing okay. Like, think I was like, okay, I could still like, you know, pull it together here, you know, 15 miles to go. I'm like, you know, it wasn't going to be like the race I kind of was like uh, expecting or I like, thought I should be able to do. But I was like, no, no, this is still good. You can do this. And the last 10 miles were terrible. <laughs> I, I mean, and then I'm sure, you know, you guys have talked to people, but like the snow at the end, it wasn't just snow. It was more like a slush puddle. I don't yeah. know how else to describe it. It was like maybe a, a six inches to a foot of slush. But like by the time I had gotten there, maybe when Adam Peterman went through, it was all still nice snow. But Fresh when I got crispy. there, yeah. it was, uh, you know, every, there was like all, motorcycles ride this trail. So there's just like all these giant holes, you know, that's like uh, dips, uh-huh. you know. And every, every one of those dips was filled with like an ankle to knee deep puddle filled with slush. And you really just kind of eventually just like F it. You just go through them. And (laughs) the last four miles, I was like, this is the most unfun running I've ever done. Most of it was pretty, I mean, there was a lot of fun times, but it was like, and then Chris Brown, I, you know, me, I don't know if you guys know Chris Brown. He's like, he grew up in Seattle. Anyways, I like left him early on. He was like, I'm just trying to do da da da. So I left him, thought I wouldn't see him again, but of course he caught me. And thankfully he kind of helped pull me along the last couple of miles through all those doggone slush puddles. But no, I mean, that last climb is like really cool. I mean, you cross this amazing river on this bridge that pro- I'm surprised they will. Did you guys hear about this bridge? Not the bridge, but we heard no. sort of about like the ridge line that you, you ended no. up running for a bit. The craziest part, there's a tree that fell through a freaking bridge that you like, I got down there. I'm like, they're going to, we're crossing this bridge. Like there's no choice. And there's a tree that literally like the bridge is like not put together. Like it's barely held on. Like the, there's oh, a couple geez. boards. There's boards that were still like, fully connected and i was like man obviously it's gonna hold but i was pretty shocked that i mean they had no other alternative so i guess they just like i don't know when that happened but yeah like it it says trail (laughs) it says it says trail (laughs) close like you get down to the river it says there's this big trail close sign you're like no i don't think it's closed but uh, (laughs) trail closed except for ryan gelfie please (laughs) yeah uh but yeah no uh the course is pretty sweet. And, you know, I mean, I heard from like two years ago that the poison oak was horrific. Like, oh, yeah. you're, you were swimming through it. So I was kind of prepared for that. I, you know, they must have done a good, you know, I, it's hard. Trail work is hard. I work with trail you know, organizations and 
whoever managed to pull it together, well, there was still some poison oak, but there it's getting pretty good. It wasn't that bad at all. Like the course was well done. Super yeah. well done. Yeah. And I mean, you know, you know all about Northwest terrain, California terrain. You've run some of the biggest yes. races out here. You you've run some of the biggest mountains out here. Uh you obviously had the FKT on the Wonderland Trail for a long time. How does this course sort of compare? Like, were you able to um do you have things that you excel at, things that you enjoy that this course had, mm. or was it just challenge from the start? Well, you know, I mean, I, I like to kind of do all different types of running. I mean, yeah. I, like something like that, this was easier than the Wonderland Trail, put it that way. Like sure. the climbs aren't, aren't overall, you know, there's a couple of climbs that are Wonderland-esque, like the last two. The last two climbs are like 2,500 feet a pop, which is super similar to the Wonderland. And they were similar, like steepness. So yeah, the last 20 miles, you might actually say, Hey, this is, it's different. It's hotter and drier. And, but you know, there's really cool big rivers and you know, it is more like that bigger Northwest feel. Mm. And the first 40 miles is more runnable. It's, you know, not all of it. I, I, I plan, I just looked at my Strava and I can kind of figure out with like cadence data, how much time I spent hiking or whatever. And, and you know, I'm not saying this is my best race ever, but I did hike like probably two and a half or three hours of the 11 hours. So there's a wow. good amount of hiking, wow. you know, for, for what I did, you know, mm -hmm. probably the, the folks winning, you know, they, they hiked less, but yeah, it's a lot. There's some tough stuff, but there's also like sections that are your classic California buttery where you're just like, you know, kind of in the beginning, there's some nice stretches where, you know, big open savanna just cruising and you feel really good because it's mile 12. Right. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it was a pretty cool combination. I, I think I liked it better than I, I didn't really expect to like the course because California foothills, I've run a bunch of races there and there's tons of great yeah. races, but it's not as cool as the Wonderland Trail, put it that way. Yeah. Uh, but I would say people who like want to go to a bigger race and want that like bigger UTMB race sort of experience and feel like you you're going to get it here. And it's, it's pretty cool course. It's worth doing. And I think that's actually a perfect part segue to the conversation. You mentioned this on your Instagram post, just in regards to UTMB, how that made the race feel different because now it has big money infrastructure. There's a lot yes. there that was not there previously. The course is a bit different than it was previously. What was it like? So I guess maybe for some backstory kind of to both races, like, so for instance, like canyons, I, uh, I ran canyons 50 K a couple of times. Like I forget what years, but maybe four or five, six years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you, you know, you started, it was different. You started and in forest Hill. I don't know how many people there were a couple hundred. It was great. I mean, they had the hundred K there was like one year, Rob Carr was there. Magdalena was there. Yeah. There were some really cool races, but they were like very, like what you'd expect from a solid, good sized American trail race. Uh, and, and I've been to UTMB three times. Uh, so I've gotten, I would and I've spent a lot of time, you know, in and around that rate, you know, a lot of people have, you know, it's like, you kind of should, you know, you go over there if you're want to, you know, take your shot at like that big stage, it's like, yeah. you do go, you, you go run that race and it just isn't even comparable on any scale. Like nothing about it's comparable, like UTMB compared to like even Western States, but any of our American races, just like the, the production value and the money that's involved yeah. and there's like hundreds of vendor booths at this doggone expo. It feels like I haven't run like New York city marathon or I've been to a couple of big city marathons and it's probably UTMB is like more grandiose than those, you know? That's crazy. Uh, so canyons is not UTMB. No one should go up. Oh, canyons is now UTMB. Like, I don't know if that's ever, who knows what their goal, you know, what the goals are. Um, but it's way different. It's like way, way, way different than probably it was a year ago. And I would think that the best example is just like when you walk it into Auburn, when you have to do packet pickup or whatever, you know, Friday before. And at UTMB, the packet pickup is a freaking nightmare. It's like you have to get there hours ahead of time and you have to schedule your slot and there's a huge line. That's so they wow. had this, that didn't happen here because this is only, you know, there were 600 or 700 people signed up for the 100K or like a thousand total, maybe for canyons, a good, a big race for America. Um, but they have like the setup as if it was like UTMB, like they had these giant tents that were like very industrial sort of tents. And, you know, you kind of walk, you walk, when you walk to get to the, where you're trying to get your bib number, you know, you walk through like a place where you can buy a bunch of stuff, <laughs> which isn't like typical, right. Of most American and you kind of have, it's like the airport where you have to walk through the gift shop area. or gift like shop. at a museum yeah. or something like it's, that. Right. It, it was exactly like that. 
and I, I don't want to say I'm just, I'm not trying to disparage it. I just want people, I want to paint the picture, you know, in an accurate way. Um, so you walk through that and like, I got there kind of late. So there was really nobody there. There was no line or anything. They had people had already been there. And I walk up and I give and the guy's like, here's your, I give him my ID. And he's like, oh, you're an elite. I'm like, ah, okay. So, I mean, <laughs> there's like a lot of people, but whatever. And I'm, anyways, he's like, well, you got to go to this blue tent, which was also just next to this other tent. And that's, you know, they had like a special, like if you were an elite, you had your own line basically. Wow. When I got there, there was no one else there, so it didn't matter. You know, it didn't matter. But it it was like that's not that's how they do it at UTB. Yeah. Like if you're an elite, right. like you get drug tested. So like every time I've been to, you know, I've been, you know, whatever. I probably made barely made the elite bar, so I had to go to the drug testing thing at UTMB. So when you get to the thing, they send you this different path, and then you go to this other tent. You sit there for an hour, anyway. So you can see like the little bit of resemblance. Um, and like the start line arch in Auburn was awesome. Like it felt like a bigger city race. It felt like this big thing. But as soon as you started and then actually ran the race, there was basically no difference. So, it felt, yeah, I imagine it's, it's <laughs> not lonely, but you're out there for, with like a handful of people. Next yeah, to next, totally. just kind of running. Yeah, it was like a good size. You know, if you think of 600 people in a trail race, which isn't like there are races that big in America, like, you know, think about Black Canyon or some of these other ones. Yeah, everything else about it, you're just like, yeah, I'm running a regular. This doesn't feel like anything crazy. Right. But like some of the, in the, in the end, you know, there's just more branding. There's more like Hoka stuff everywhere. There's, you know, you just get the feel like in five years, who knows what it will look like. But right now it's not that. There's just a few things that are different. And they're not like bad differences, but um, it'll, I'm just really curious to see the evolution in the next five to 10 years. Like do other bigger organizations start to emulate, you know, UTMB or just UTMB buy or start more races. And I mean, really we're going to vote with our dollars, right? People are going to choose what races to run. And mm -hmm. that's exactly. what's going to, frankly, people are going to choose these races. It's like they have marketing dollars and it is fun <laughs> running big races. I like small races too. I mean, I kind of like both a lot. I like FKTs where it's just you. Um, anyways, it's, uh, it's very interesting seeing it come to like, you know, our backyard basically, or, you know, somewhere, I, you know, yeah, just down the road from home. It's not like you have to go to Europe now to have these have kinds that of experience. events. Yeah, yeah I was of. super curious on that uh, aspect of it because, you know, European trail racing compared to American trail racing, it's a conversation we've had a number of times. It's different, mm -hmm. very, very different. Like the spectacle there is big. The 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 fan uh, support is huge. The sponsorship yeah. support is huge. So to see it start here in the US, I am also curious. I. I'm both excited to see where it goes just in five years. I imagine mm -hmm. something like canyons or the other by UTMB uh, races will continue to grow. I think there'll be destination races to a degree, but I also think we'll still be able, I hope as race directors of a small <laughs> mom and pop <laughs> race, I hope that there is still that draw to smaller races because of that uniqueness to American trail running where, solo adventure self challenge that's a part of the that's a part of mm -hmm. it um not just i want to run the biggest race with the flashiest lights and music and stuff you know <laughs> i hope there's a place for both i there are 100 there's for sure a place for both you know you know i think the interesting part is like where's the what is the media covering and like you know because wow. like the, i guarantee like well run races like tiger claw like so many other american you know races that aren't you know 100 you know a thousand people that are a couple hundred people like in, in some ways those are going to have an advantage the ones that are run really well that have awesome courses like as more people do like things like utmb like they're going to pull more people into the sport and then these more you might start to call them niche right like you know it, it, these experiences are going to be harder to produce and i i would if i was a race i actually am a race director i started a schema yeah. race which is not a running race obviously but uh, it's really hard. So kudos to you guys. I know that was my first go at it and it, it's hard being a race director, but no, I wouldn't worry about like the competition from bigger race organizations. You know, if you have a really cool race, like, I mean, people are going to come. Uh, but if I think race organizations that like are just not as like, maybe they don't have people that are as, have as much time for it, or maybe who knows, they're just not as good at it, whatever. Like, I'm sure you're going to see consolidation. Like there's not enough room for as many and here I am just postulating about, you know, the economics of trail running, but uh, I don't think there's enough room for as many of total events as there are now. Like I think some will go away and the ones that remain are going to do really, really well.
and they yeah. don't have to get huge. They don't have to get huge to do it. Like I love going to races where there's 200, you actually talk to people, you know, 200 people you can, and Canyon still felt like, frankly, like at the end of Canyons, you know, it felt like normal sort of end of a race. Yeah. You know, six, 700 people is, is fairly standard. I know that there are races that are bigger than that in the U S that are not by UTMB. And, and uh -huh. I remember North face, like the North North face challenge, uh, towards the end of the year would have so many distances that there'd be right. thousands of people running over the course of the weekend. And you still would get the chance to see the people you needed to see, um, friends that you haven't seen in months and since the last start line or whatever. And yep. I, at UTM, UTMB, you don't, I mean, I don't know. You still see oh, people, yeah. but like, I mean, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy. Like, yeah, like we're, I don't American, like um, the way our land is, our public lands are managed is super different. Yeah. And again, like, I'm like pretty informed, but like, you know, I'm not a forest service, you know, employee. I don't know all the rules, but I doubt we'll see the same scope. Like there's not a lot of public lands in America yeah. where the land managers are going to sign off on 10,000 runners. They, I think they yeah. will sign off on a thousand. You know, like they do, like, and they should, I think they, I think it's the right call. This is not ruining our landscape. It's not doing, it's actually probably helping Like the trails are going to do better. We're going to have more money for trail maintenance. Like yeah. I think these things are good, but they're probably not good. Like UTMB has over the course of that week in that Valley, you know, there's 15, 12 to 14,000 total runners over the, yeah. with all their different events. So I kind of have a hard time seeing America having that event. Um, it would yeah. be a challenge. It would absolutely, absolutely through permitting, as you know, as a race director, it, it, it's going to be a big challenge just from a permitting perspective, only because you start mentioning numbers of that scale and any public lands or, or, or controlled lands mm -hmm. would have, would be like red flags, right? Not that it would necessarily do damage, but it would, the impetus to protect is rightfully pretty strong amongst, uh, the land, uh, control. Yeah. I, do you want to talk a bit about the uh, additionally what you were mentioning? By the way, if anyone has any live questions for Ryan, please drop them into the chat. You pulled a couple already. Uh, we'll get to this in a second. Um, the conversation about you are an elite runner. You've been at the front of the pack uh, your whole career. You're incredibly fast, incredibly talented, as I mentioned, FKTs and, and the whole business. Uh, what was it like to approach this race? I'm mm. sure you're using it as a trainer for Cascade Crest, but did you approach it as a... I want to get a golden ticket or did you approach it from a, I just need mm -hmm. to get it done. I want to get some points or how did you sure approach it? This is, a, I think that's a great question. Uh, it's something I have to, I've, you know, I think I've continually sort of had to wrestle with like, it's, you're very generous. I have been able to do pretty well. I'm not like, I don't win big. I never won North face or you, I know I'm like, Hey, if I get top 10 at, you know, North face, that was a good day or, you know, whatever. Like I, I would go compete at a pretty high level. Um, so no, I wouldn't, I was not using canyons as a training race. I was running it because I like, you know, it's been a couple of years. I haven't been at a big ultra in a couple of years. Yeah. And it's kind of a, kind of a COVID thing. Kind of a, I have two kids, I got a five-year-old and a one-year-old and they're ass kickers. And I don't know, <laughs> we bought, anyways, there's just been a bunch of stuff. We bought this house and it was a piece of gar, you know, it was a garbage house. Cause that's what you do when you're young, you buy a garbage house and then try to fix it. Cause that's how much money you have. Uh, so there's been a whole bunch of things where I just didn't run a big. So I was like, you know what, you know, one of my buddies like, dude, you should run canyons. And I'm like, all right, you're right. I should. And, and I was like, you know, it's fun you know, go to these races where, you know, there's going to be people way better than you. And there's just a ton of people, right? So you're going to race people like there's no matter what you're not going to go and win like i knew this was not a race i'm like trying to win in fact you say i've gotten really close to golden tickets in the past like i've missed them by one spot three different times yeah which is a little bit heartbreaking uh so i've never run western states which is you know eventually i probably i will at some point you know unless i die soon then i'll still run it uh <laughs> <laughs> but uh that's the but this for the show that's the quote yeah that is the new title for the show <laughs> but i look you know looking at this start list and i just knew where my you know where my fitness and life were at i'm like yeah golden ticket that's that would be wishful thinking so i was mm. like you know top 10 i was like i think top 10 would be kind of a good goal and to try to run 10 hours uh and as it turned out, I think from a for a bunch of different reasons, that might have been a little too outlandish too, just given, you know, there's so many people like, oh, you know, why are you the fitness that you are? And like, what is the whole, you know, all these things that come together to like make you your current 
and the current athlete that you are, you know, it's like a former version of myself probably would have had a good shot to be top 10, but at this time that was just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it became more evident as, you know, I got, you know, you know, 30 or 40 miles into the race. I'm like, man, maybe top 20 would be good. <laughs> uh, you know, and so yeah, yeah. I think that like you have to reframe stuff and be like, all right, like, what's the point of this? Like, why the hell are we doing this anyways? Uh, there's no, like, okay. So let's say you do go get top 10. Like, all you're going to want to do is like, oh, I should, I wish I would have been top. You know, you always want to be better. You know, you all, unless your name is uh, Kip Chogi, you always want to be better. Uh, you know, you always, you're, you're someone you're like, I need to be better than that person yeah, or ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I think I, you know, using this race, it's like just doing it as an end in itself. It's not for the stones or the points or the golden tickets, or I don't know, like what, making people think you're cool like why do we run like i think it's partially like you just have to go do it because it's hard and you want to go put yourself through that kind of difficult miserable experience and like if you haven't done it in a while it's like you know i wanted to go do it again so you know I, what i fi- i finished 27th man but i think i was 35th overall because i mostly was running with like the lead women's runners which was actually really fun and to see them yo-yoing back and forth and it's almost like I was a spectator of a different, you know, of a race that technically, you know, it's not necessarily, you know, you're not racing the women, even though you get to run with them. I don't know. It's an interesting dynamic. Um, I'm actually curious just to, to jump in here. <laughs> if this is different than how you felt in previous races, uh, I, I uh, love kind of hearing you talk about you're doing it just to do it versus, yeah. you know, I'm doing it to not necessarily to earn like points or a golden ticket or something, but how I imagine most elites approach or we, talked about it on the show uh they want to push yeah. themselves to a point where they can win or they want to believe that they can win and so they go and they try and they do whereas this is mm-hmm. much more of a i just want to kind of go through the motions of running 100 kilometers get into some pain and work my yeah. way out of it like is that new for you uh i mean it's new in some ways because like you know f- a few years ago I was fast. I mean, I, I think I could probably still be fast. It's not like I'm like, oh, I'm washed up. I'm 33. Mm-hmm. I think I still have good years ahead of me. I, you know, that's I don't. Or, I'll I, jump in know, here and I say think... that you do, and <laughs> and you are fast. <laughs> we but, got your back. I mean, this was kind of a different experience in that, like, I knew pretty. I knew from training, like, you know, I'm not like at the level that I have been at times. So I've got to reevaluate. You know, well, what can I? what should I be shooting for? And then even in the middle of the race, it's like, Oh, okay. You know, maybe this, you know, you weren't, you know, cause I skied a lot in the winter and I, I got COVID at one point. So that sucked. Uh, that actually was, it's not a cold as, as it turned out, like it did kind of suck. Uh, and anyway, so a bunch of stuff happened and like, um, so yeah, you get into the race and yeah, it's a totally, it was a totally, it was a totally different experience. And like, I cur- so one thing I'll just back up and say, like, I'm currently not a sponsored runner. I have been in mm. the past. I had mm. Nike sponsorship, Hoka sponsorship. And just as a sidebar, people who are like trying to do this because they think sponsorship is like the, the goal, I would say d- I wouldn't put too much stock in making that your goal. Like, it's pretty cool, sort of. And it does help. Like, I got to go to Europe a handful of times and I might not have done that as much. So I'm not saying don't like that. It's like. Oh, never do that. Like it was pretty cool, but like, you're not going to get there and be like, I've arrived. Like there is no such thing. You never. Right. Yeah. I, I can that's imagine that's, that's a challenge too. I mean, that's a whole, let's talk about that for a second. So when you, uh, when you became an unsponsored athlete, was mm-hmm. that liberating? Was it, um, yeah. exciting or was it like a, Oh man, like I need to refocus or re. <laughs> find a new path or like what goes through oh, an elite athlete's head i'm super curious shit probably all of those everything you mm. just said definitely all of those things went through my head for sure like mm. I, even to back up further i was never making enough money as like a as a sponsored it wasn't like making my living i did make there was some money i'm not saying it was zero dollars and there was certainly travel and you know gear and stuff so there was it was good it wasn't like no financial like yeah yeah but it it wasn't like, oh, I got unsponsored and now I'm screwed. Like I already doing other stuff to like pay for my, yeah. you know, rent, pay for my life. So it wasn't like, oh, now I need to find a new path. I was like, I'm already on this path. Like the sponsorship was just kind of helpful. It's like supplemental, uh, it, essentially. It was pretty supplemental. It didn't like mean I couldn't do, you know, it didn't change that much. I had to like figure out oh, how am I going to, now I got to find a new way to get shoes. Uh, and, and, <laughs> and, 
and the track no it wants more but still like but it kind of does like there's an identity thing like people there's still people who will come up to me like oh you sponsored and i'm like no like that's not like i'm not but like doesn't change me like i'm not like now i'm worthless because i'm not sponsored uh and now I, it's like i no no none of my like desire or ambition or you know sort of you know what, desire to do this sport like it doesn't change that like i'm sure it does for some people but for me it you know yeah, it's not, it didn't and it, and it won't. Um, but it does kind of change like how you, when you step to a start line, now you're like, well, I, I'm just a, I'm not a Hoka runner. Now I'm just a runner. Right. And it is, it is funny. And it's, it makes you realize how kind of asinine, like this whole sponsorship notion that it does change you or like it does, it shouldn't. And, you know, uh, you're still just you and you're just happen to be wearing this like funny Man, colored I kit. I fucking yeah. love that. I love it yeah. because we're not sponsored. I don't know if you knew this, Ryan, but him and I are <laughs> not uh, elite athletes uh, sponsored. Um, non sponsored. I am really appreciative of the transparency for sure. I mean, that's a, I think this is a conversation that we never really get to chat about. Um, and I also think people have this idea or this notion that, oh, these, you know, everybody's working to try and be a sponsored athlete. And then once they're a sponsored athlete, they're on this different level of like, you know, you mm. have arrived or, or whatever that you just said. Um, and that's mm -hmm. not necessarily the case and being sponsored yeah. does not necessarily equate to being a successful or a happy athlete either. Without a doubt. I love to hear that you are, that you're like the sponsor or having a sponsorship did not dictate your happiness. It was like, you know, sure it's fun and it's fine. And the gear and the relationship with the brand is cool and unique. And it's yes. probably a cool thing to be able to say like, Hey, I'm, I'm on team X now, whatever that might be. Yeah. But then there's also the realization when you don't have Team X that it's like, I'm still me. I'm still the same person, the same athlete. Yep. My ability hasn't changed other than, you know, the kit maybe or you're, whatever. Maybe you got to look. And like you're getting older. It's like someone would look at you and say, well, you're like for me. I mean, just to be straight up, it's like I'm not a Jim Walmsley or a Killian or even a tier below that. You know, I was someone who, got, you know, I ran well and also got lucky. Like some people run so good. It's like, well, of course, they're going to get sponsored because they just won whatever, you know, they're mm. that level. I'm like, I like to say, I'm not insulting B tier people. I, I mean, I'm saying that there's this B tier where you get sponsored, but it doesn't mean you for sure were going to get sponsored. You ran good and got lucky. And that was me and you know, a bunch of other people too. Um, so like that, t you know, that sort of echelon of person, I, I don't know. It, it not, you know, it helped me a lot to like go, cause like the sponsorship thing did kind of and I was sponsored for six years and it does become sort of an identity sort of thing. Even if you are really thoughtful about it, it's, you know, you, it, it, you get your bigger, you got a big head. I got a, you know, I, not that I got a, I didn't do stuff where you're like, got this crazy big, we get a bigger head than you probably should. And then when you get unsponsored, you have to be like, Oh wait, you know, am I, but was I like, anyways, you have to like rethink about your motivations and goals and, and I always loved this stuff just for its own sake. Like even yeah. when I was a sponsored runner, I was just like, man, I love climbing mountains. I love running cool places and you know, none of that changed. And so like going to can like just to back up, like going to canyons, it's like, you know, not sponsored. No one's telling me to go here, but I do love these, you know, races where you get to really test yourself. You're going to get your ass handed to you and you know, you're going to for sure have to go as hard as you can to do whatever you're going to do. So it, it's, it was pretty worth it. It was, even though it kind of sucks, it sucked kind of <laughs> like, it wasn't like a great race, but like, it's still worth it. And you know, it sounds like you had similar experiences to I've had in my hundred Ks where like, there's moments where it's like, man, this is great. This is beautiful. This is amazing. But then you have like the typical lows that yes. come with a distance like that, where you have to dig yourself out of, I mean, a dark place. And you're walking down uh -huh. a descent eating salt pills. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're walking down a descent eating salt pills and you don't know how many you need to eat. You're just taking as many as you need to take. How many did I, I took like, I think I, I usually just take two at a time. This one, I was like, I need, I'm just going to go three. Let's just see if that, you know, cause like this cramp, it's like the kind of cramp you can't run through. It's like, nope, got to walk, can barely yeah. walk. I kind of stood there for a while. I'm like, just kind of waiting. I'm like, hopefully this will stop. You don't have to mention yeah, no. the brand, but they might want to sponsor you. I'm just saying. Uh. I, you know, I actually would have to go look at it. I, you know, I bought it on, I bought it on the internet. So I, I don't even remember. Well, what let's hope they're was. salt pills. Let's hope that that's sponsored like, by well, the internet. Yeah, sponsored there, by. The internet. <laughs> there was some potassium. I read the back. I do know. I know that there was, uh, was electrolytes, but no. Uh, 
yeah, it's that kind of experience, right? Like there's, you know, you're not just like on cloud nine, just like whizzing through like, oh, I've done, you know, I don't know, but ultras are still, they, they definitely are valuable. And then you always want to quit like running at like mile 50 or at this race. You're like, I should quit this sport. Like, what am I doing out here? And then a few days later, you're like, no, that was wrong. Like, don't quit. That was still, you know, and like, you know, I'm going to run Cascade Crest in a few months. And I, you know, I, it's like, I think it, it'll probably go a lot better almost certainly. And, you know, you just have to be open to the possibility of what the future holds, I guess, no, you know, whether you're, no matter what you're, where you are right now. Uh, some fresh comments from the chat here. Sarah Gerardo says, so cool to hear Gelfi talk about this, such a humble and rad athlete. And too Angela, far, too far. <laughs> Angela Couser with the, this is really interesting behind the scenes talk. And I, I totally agree. Um, this is really fun stuff to chat about because we don't really get a chance to cover this stuff with elite athletes. Yeah. We, you know, we don't, it's not that we tiptoe around it, but I know a lot of athletes are, they kind of keep their sponsorship we, close to their heart, understandably so. Yeah. Yeah. It makes sense. People want it. They either feel like they should. I mean, I'm not going to get into this. I don't want to get sued, you know, or what? I don't think anyone's going to sue me. Even if I told you all the details, right? Because they all, I mean, all the, I mean, everybody knows this is just standard. Like all the contracts say you can't talk about them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, at least in specifics, but like mm -hmm. in generalities, I'm like, I don't know. I should, should be able to talk about it in generalities. And I can talk about how it, sorry, no one can, I can talk about how it felt and like what it was like and, you know that I didn't make a living for, you know, that I, you know, some people might think, oh, if you're wearing a Hoka jersey or a Nike jersey or any other brand, right, that you're paying your mortgage with it. And like some people are, but I'd say, and I am guessing, but I would say most probably aren't. If you see totally. a yeah. guy or a yep. gal and they're wearing whatever, like they might, it's, it's supplemental for probably 80% of the folks in America. And maybe in 20 years, who knows, maybe there's a whole league and there's like, other corporate entities like Toyota that are like, we love ultra running and we're going right. to sponsor a whole team. And, you know, that kind of world would probably say, Hey, Oh wait, now there's like 50 people that make a living, but right now there's probably like, you know, a handful. And yeah. they're probably, so it's probably social media driven as often as it is performance driven. I mean, it's both. Yeah, absolutely. As social media, um, uh, people who we rely on social media for this, you know, like our GR crew wouldn't be what it, what it, what it is without social media and, Patreon in and of itself is a social media platform, but we're able to make a living in the sport doing what we love and making making cool content, but we're by no yeah. means elite, you know what I mean? And I think that there, we we have a really unique perspective, Ryan. You've been in the sport now for many, many years and-, and Yeah, ten, you... 10 years. I think this is my 11th year. I just looked at, I was like, holy crap. It's like, I mean, I did run before I ran other, you know, track and whatever cross country, but right. like I ran my first ultra in 2012 and I was like, man, like, this is the start of the 11th year of this. Like, I just did that today. I just time. reflected. I did my first ultra <laughs> in 2012. And oh, wow. So we started at the same time. That's we cool. did. What? Which one was it for you? Oh, you would never heard. It doesn't exist anymore. But it was this little 50K in Red Bluff, California. I grew up kind of near there. Uh -huh. So it was totally random. It might be one of my best performances I ever ran. But <laughs> normal, you know, that's impossible. It was like, I mean, I ran really good. Uh, totally tiny. Like, you know, class, if there was like maybe 60 people. Excellent. In, you know, super small town, you know, middle of nowhere kind of race. I do love, I mean, it was super fun. Like I like super fond memories of that. It's kind of fun though, to, to reflect back because I feel like ultra has been here long before we were here. And yes. I, I want to mm -hmm. acknowledge the, the pioneers of the sport, the men and women who were out there in the mountains holding syrup, syrup containers. Bottles. Yeah. Like <laughs> drinking water out of syrup containers and like, we get it. But I will say that there's, absolutely been an uptick in both media coverage brand sponsorships and the amount of races in this country in the last 10 years like we've seen this mm -hmm. exponential growth of the sport it's been amazing it's been concerning at times like oh my god the sport's going to never be the same and it's going to be worse clearly that's not necessarily the case i think if anything mm -hmm. ultra like we're bringing more people to the sport and that's always been our goal is to bring more people to trail um but it is unique now to see that there are athletes who will run a race win, not have a sponsorship and then people call for them to get sponsored that's something that we see in the road community a lot right like road races marathons like how is this person not sponsored how are they not on a team and we're seeing it now in ultra like how does that person not have a brand on their shirt and it's a part of me is like excited that that energy is there um mm -hmm. sponsorships want to come in and hopefully brands continue want to support athletes and doing the things they love but i also 
acknowledge that athletes like you who, if they got a sponsorship, maybe was supplemental, um, but figured out that it's not, it, the sponsor doesn't bring the joy or the happiness to the sport. It might support you in your That's uh, right. pursuit in the sport. It's you and your pursuit of the happiness and it's all internal. Uh, so talking with someone like you, Ryan, is like super refreshing. Um, and I think anyone who, God, I, I hope that, that that individual who maybe is winning races or in the front of the pack sort of watches this episode, gets a chance to listen to Gelfi, um, and knows that like, keep doing what you're doing because you love it, not because of the like financial carrot in front of you. That or, the, sort of thing. or the social, or the social, or the social benefit, side right? of it. Yeah. 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 Cause like being, just being able to like, yeah, it, it's like, you want to have that validation. Like I wasted all this time. <laughs> I'd spent all this time on this thing, but Hey, I did, you know, I got sponsored. So now all is meaningful. I'm like, if you can strip that kind of motivation away, I think, I think it's just a lot better if an endeavor mm. on, an, on, a, you know, the more intrinsic your motivation can be the better. It's not an easy thing to do. Like no matter who you are, yeah, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. like I still run a race and I still post the, I still do put a dog on post on social media. Like, why do I even do that? You know? Uh, I mean, so it's not like, all. it's not like all or none, but I, I think that like, it is worth thinking about no matter if you're, a, you know, trying to become sponsored or, you know, you know, you're, you're never you're going to reach whatever that level, you know, you're not trying to reach that level, whatever, like just trying to make like your running be something you do for its own sake. Uh, it, it probably makes it better and it's a good yeah. thing to practice. It's a good, cause you know, it, you're not going to do it perfect. Like you're still going to have these stupid, like in canyons, like I have all the stupid thoughts that will run through my head. Like, Oh my gosh, you just got passed by more people. Like how bad does this look? Da, da, yeah. You know, like those thoughts are still totally the, and then like, okay, I, you know, then there's the other, you know, the guy on this shoulder is telling this guy like, Hey, you know, that's stupid. Like, why are you thinking that? Uh, I know. So we're all going to have these kinds of thoughts, you know, I think no matter what, you know, what level we're at. I love knowing that it, that goes throughout the pack. Yeah. Cause I feel like, <laughs> oh man, only mid packers know what those voices are like or back of the packers. But I love knowing I think that it's probably, I think gamut. everybody probably, they might not want to acknowledge them. You know, you don't want to look weak, you know, but yeah, like you're saying, if you talk to like, people who are currently sponsored by X, Y, or Z brand, you know, it is, it's a reason why someone like me can come on a show like yours and just say whatever they want. Cause like, right. what do I care? Like, uh, you know, no one, yeah, I, I, there's no interest. I have no interest in saying anything other than what I think. So, no, but it's sure. hard for if, if you are sponsored, like, yeah, they're not going to say the same thing. And I probably wouldn't have either. <laughs> yeah. But that, again, that's why I appreciate this conversation. Um, and I feel I'm proud of this conversation now. I'm like, man, this is, uh, I didn't know how I, I always sit down for Ginger on her life. Kim and I always kind of chat beforehand when we have a guest on, like, where, where's the direction we want to take the conversation. And tonight I was right. highly anticipating that we would get to the point of sort of like self comparison. We took it. I think we took that and, and elevated it to a point where I didn't expect the conversation to go this way, like about sponsorship, about happiness, about the pursuit of the sport for how it makes you feel and the joy that you feel within it. Uh, uh, and I love that it went there. So Ryan, I just appreciate your transparency and your openness yeah. regard this, this whole conversation. No, just great. I didn't, refreshing. I didn't know either. I mean, I, I mean, these are things I think, and I think about what should I write on this social media post? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. oh, I, sh- I should, I should say more. And a lot of, I, 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 I'm not like completely just open to the world. I'd probably, most people aren't, but, uh, I don't know sometimes in a format like this, it's easier almost than like sitting there writing this, like you know, curated posts that you're going to put up or something. Right. Everything's curated in a way, right? Like I, I will, yeah. I will open up my feelings a little bit, but then I need to edit those, but then I need to edit those feelings. I, like, oh, those. I don't want to say it this way. Oh, I look a little sad there. Let me just edit that to make it less sad, more happy. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but, you guys, but, but, you, everybody knows. Yeah. Everyone yeah. knows. I do, uh, I do want to wrap up the main show here, but of course, before we do, I did want to talk a bit about Cascade Crest because it's a race close and dear to our hearts. Cool. Myself. Yes. Um, uh, well, why Cascade Crest? And are you freaking stoked for it? Because it's going to be amazing this year. This year. Well, so I'm actually interested in why this year, but so yeah, I am psyched. So I guess to back up kind of about our same conversation, I ran, I like these European races really cool. I ran UTMB three times. Mm-hmm. Sponsors, they don't make, it's not like they say, hold a gun to your head and say, go to UTMB or, you know, but you kind of have to, you should go. And, you know, it's like you lose the sponsorship and I'm like, huh, what should I do? Like, 
UTMB is cool, but I, do I need to do it a fourth time right now? Maybe some, maybe I will. No, I'm not saying I'll never run it again because yeah. it is cool. But I'm like, there's so many cool American hundreds that I haven't run and that I would like to run. And like, I'd like to run them while I'm in my like competitive sort of years where it's like, who knows? I don't know if I'm going to win Cascade Crest, but it's like, I'm, yeah, I have the ability to compete at, whatever at a high level, hopefully at Cascade Crest. So I'm like, I should do that while I, you know, while I'm 33. So like races like Cascade Crest were like right to the top of my list. Like Angelis Crest is pretty, I want to run Angelis Crest pretty bad too. And I know I'll be hot as freaking Hades, but that is uh, a bonkers I, race. Yeah. I would like to, I would really like to run that and to think, you know, things like Wasatch and I'm sure there's other ones that'll come into my brain, but you know, as soon as I kind of thought about it, I'm like, Oh no, this year I'm going to put in for Cascade Crest. I just put, I don't know. Sometimes races will let you in if you're like elite. I don't know if that's true of Cascade Crest. I just put in for the lottery and I was like, hopefully I'll get in. Cause I, you know, that I didn't put in for any other lotteries. I was like, well, that's what I'm going to do. And thankfully I did get picked and that course just looks awesome. And I love Washington in the summer. It's just what it's, it's as good as it gets to, as a, for a place to go running in the most amazing mountains. Like sometimes I wish I moved to Washington. It's like, but in the winter, it's a little bit, I don't know. I like where I live because it's a little bit more moderate and sunnier yeah. in the winter. But I tell you what, like that course just looks rad. And I know last year it kind of got, you know, screwed up with forced closures and fires. But hopefully this one, it's just one big loop, you know, perfect. Uh, it's just very aesthetically pleasing. And I have been through Snoqualmie Pass and I've skied there and done some backcountry. Anyway, so I, I have a good sense for like what it's, the feel is going to be like, but I've never been to the race. I'm super pumped to just be able to go up there and, you know, number one goal, just to go finish the doggone thing. I know yeah. that's like, you know, get a hundred mile finish again. Yeah. I'm psyched to go. It's, so why this year? Is it cool? I, I mean, this year I've just it earlier. Right. So like the fact that you're going to be able to run and have less risk, hopefully of fire right. damage yeah. and actually earlier in the season. Right. And then the hope that it will be the true course. Yeah. Cause it's had to, you know, the year I ran it, it was smoke. smoky. Yeah, it was really bad. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like smoke. I'm like, bring it out. Not, <laughs> we, I live in the smoke, man. <laughs> no, so you so you got a smoke course. Not fun. I was yeah, smoke and heat. You were in the rarest uh, summer storm. Worst ever. summer storm in history in Washington State. So I got it all. Was it, like, uh, was it, was it snow, snowing or was it just snow, like sleet? Yeah, yeah. No, it was sleet and snow at the higher elevations. Uh, really high winds and rain. Um, and really cold temperatures like I, that. The week yeah, went from I, we're expecting 85 to 95 degree heat training, temps, heat to, training <laughs> to two days before it could snow. And it did. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was like, wow, I was ill prepared because I came from Southern California at the time I was living in L.A. So I was all heat trained and I just yeah, it was like cold beyond cold and but it should be really yeah. nice with the earlier start this year the, yeah. i mean there could be still snow in some sections maybe you know but old snow is old snow is fine you know i like you know old consolidated you know snow i, I, I don't mind traveling over that you know i don't know it's cascade crest just it seemed like a course in a it's not a big race right like they have about a hundred i just you know the entrance list they let a hundred it looks like about 180 people um i don't know i was excited to run like an older american tough hundred you know uh, that I, yeah so like it was it just was like what i decided to do and uh yeah so we, i'm gonna bring the kids you know cool. wife and kids and come up and hopefully camp for a few days and and do the race you know it's yeah just for yeah like i said just kind of for its own sake like if i won that'd be cool but like if that cannot be the motivation like yeah. i have to just be like i'm gonna run this course i'm gonna try to finish basically come you can't have like these outs like oh you know if I feel bad, no, like basically, unless I'm, you know, dying, it's like, I got to finish. Uh, so that's kind of the goals. And then whatever the placement is, or, you know, that, that we'll just have to it see is what it is, and, you know, the next 12 weeks, if I can train well, like, you know, it should be good. One of the cool, <laughs> are you getting choked up? <laughs> <laughs> well, talking about, uh, one of the coolest things about cascade and, uh, you know, I think a lot of hundreds have this quality, but cascade very, very special that there's something exciting almost every 10 miles or so, whether it's a, mm -hmm. a, a, a peak that you hit that you get this great view, or if it's the rope section or the or tunnel a or, or a lake yeah, or, or a the, the needles, the trail from yeah. hell, like there's something basically to the look forward course. to almost every five or 10 miles, the whole course. So even when right. you're in your lowest, you're like, well, I got to go see what this next, <laughs> I know I got to get to the top of Mount Thorpe at mile 80. I got to even get if, to, even if it's in the dark, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah, because like I've coached runners in the past. Like last year, I had a couple runners were doing it, and like so, following along and like just like diving into the detail of the course, it was just really obvious that like what you're saying was the case. Like, no, this is like this is it's a jaw dropping. It's a jaw dropping course. Uh, you know, there's plenty of good courses, but I think this this appears to be a great course. So it, yeah, it I really is. for someone who hasn't run it, that's that was my impression. Yeah. Well, we can't wait to see it. We'll be there, we'll so be there. we'll yeah. uh, uh, cool. we'll obviously support in any way possible, and and. Man, Ryan, again, thank you so much for the conversation tonight. Just wonderful, wonderful chat. And uh, I do want to give you an opportunity to mention anything uh, that you want to promote, whether that's a oh. social media channel, if you want to talk about your Instagram or coaching services or Trails and Tarmac. I'm assuming you're, are you still sure. Trails and Tarmac? Yeah, whatever you like. Yeah, let me, I'll okay. just do two. I And I got all kinds of stuff going on. I'll just do two things. So yeah, Trails, this is, Trails and Tarmac is a coaching business. I started with David Laney to get, you know, we were into college together and we started this, only, it's going on seven years. It's actually kind of crazy. This is what I do. That's what I do for work. I get to work with about, I keep my runners to about 25 to 30. So I'm usually kind of full, but we find very specific, we find people to bring on, to like bring on to our Trails and Tarmac team. So we've just, we're not huge. Like we've just gradually, slowly grown and found people we wanted to add. And so that's like, an awesome day job. And then what I'm really excited about also is, I don't know if you guys know about fast packing, mm -hmm. if you've heard the term, but my wife and I are offering, uh, we have a new, another new business. It's called wilderness fast packing, where we're offering, we have four, just three or four trips we're going to put on this summer in the wilderness areas in like far Northern California. And so we have all, I bought, I, that's actually where I had put a bunch of money. You know, we went and bought all the stuff. So I have like eight of everything for yes. fast packing kits like so it's you know uh so people can come and go do these trips with us they don't have to have any of this stuff so i know that's a big barrier why do people not you know get into but a they don't you know how do i do it navigation how do i cook whatever there's lots of so it's like backpacking but with light packs so they're pretty light you know 15 pounds with your food and water up anyways so you can run but it's mostly hiking and we go for three day trips anyways what's the name, what's what, the name of that is that it's also called, through Trails and Tarmac? Tarmac? No, no, it's a totally separate business. Uh, it's called Wilderness Fast Packing. Wilderness Fast Packing. That's awesome. Yeah, that is freaking awesome. Uh, yeah, if it's cool, this will be Ryan. the second. Yeah, this will be that. We just, we did a couple trips last year. We got smoked out, forest closures. I mean, everybody knows. So Classic. last year we kind of got hammered, but yeah, we're back. And we're, so this will be our second year and hopefully have a full summer of trips that we're putting on. Uh, that sounds freaking awesome. Yeah. Let's chat about that in the after show. That sounds perfect. Cool. Yeah. Uh, our guest tonight has been Ryan Galfi. We are we're just what a great show. Uh, I'm so thankful to have him as a friend and also for him to join us on the show tonight. Um, just wonderful, wonderful chat. Uh, a reminder, if you would like to join our after show, I think I know exactly what I'm going to be asking about um, here. All you have to do is head on over to <laughs> patreon.com slash the ginger runner. All tiers get access to our after shows both tonight, all of our archived after shows from all of our previous ginger runner lives as well as future um, as well. Uh, crew member of the week. Yes. Kim and I like to recognize members of the community who go above and beyond every single week. We call it our GR crew member of the week. Kim, who is this week's GR crew member? Uh, this week's GR crew member of the week is Justin Newnham. And Justin posted, I picked this one because the picture was super cute. Uh, <laughs> and you guys can't see the picture, but it is on Discord. Uh, Justin ran a very cool 5K race in Iowa City. And he posted a picture with uh, his two little kids saying that they had stole his banana. So they, they <laughs> took his nutrition for the race. <laughs> so he had nothing. So he had nothing. <laughs> Sorry, the Justin. The kids had banana. That's excellent. <laughs> Uh, but congrats on your 5K race, Justin. Congratulations, Justin. And uh, we appreciate you all so much for tuning in to tonight's Ginger Runner Live, episode 396. We'll be back next week. Uh, and then there will be a bye week because Tiger Claw is happening. Our in-person race is happening on May 14th. It's coming up in just a matter of weeks. We're very, very excited about it. Uh, but next week, we will have a lot of fun here on Ginger Runner Live. If you would like to join our daily live streams or support this channel in any way, Patreon is the best way to do it. Patreon.com slash The Ginger Runner. That's it, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We'll see you in the after show. Get out there, train hard, race harder, and party the hardest. Bye. <laughs>